once again, it's a blessing to be out in the time to study in God's Word. We praise God for those who are with us right now to, um, on this Wednesday night, once again, 7.30 to 8.30, for joining us. And um, for those who know that um, we are going through the book of Proverbs, uh, chapter by chapter, taking our time, not hitting every point, but trying to study to make sure that we are learning about our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and what he applied for us in this living we have today. The topic that we're going to be talking about tonight is uh, the path of wisdom and life, the path of wisdom and life. For this night, we always like to say before we even get into the word, uh, just one again, one again to remind those of the things that we need to be doing, social distancing, washing your hands, uh, wearing your face mask, uh, realizing that you're not just protecting yourself, but you're protecting others out there and that we want to continue to pray for those in this uh, with the fires going on in the certain areas around. And then also we were reminded, even today, watching the news, even before I come to this point of this Bible uh, study tonight, is the things that are going on um, back there in Louisville, Kentucky, over the uh, the killing of Breonna Taylor. And, you know, my, my heart goes out to the family and the people there. Uh, if there's any time that we as the people of God really need to be praying for this world, we need to be praying now. So as we get in here tonight and prepare our hearts for prayer, uh, yes, we want to pray for that unrest there and the decision that is made that really to me uh, personally makes no sense. Uh, but, you know, I don't want to make this a political time, but I do realize that God has given us a spirit of discernment and we need to discern right from wrong. And uh, so we're going to pray for that. So in this time of prayer, we want to remind ourselves to pray for our families, those in bereavement. And we want to continue to pray for those. And we want to pray for um, uh, the Jackson family, um, Mother Jackson, who went home to be with the Lord on yesterday. Um, and we just uh, pray for her daughters, her sisters, and her church family there at New Beginnings Christian Fellowship, where she was a faithful member there. We just pray for her and her pastor and all as they prepare to put her body to rest. And also we want to pray for uh, those who are affected uh, by the viruses, our churches, just unity in our government, healing. We, and I've seen on the news they have a vaccine that they're saying that may be ready by November. Who knows? Uh, but we want to pray for our president our pastors, our finances, and our country. And we don't ever want to forget our unsaved loved ones that who don't know the Lord that we really need to be praying for in this time of uh, pandemic and just um, all this upheaval. So at this time, we're going to ask that you would just bow with us in a time of prayer. Eternal God, our Father, Lord, we come tonight, Father, we just with a heart of thanksgiving, thanking and praising you for another day, Father. Thanking you, O oh God, for allowing us to come together to assemble around your word. And Lord, we know your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our pathway. But Lord, more importantly, Father, we know that you are praying for us with groanings that cannot be uttered. But Lord, we want to pray for those who cannot pray for themselves. Lord, those who are bedridden, those who are in time of bereavement, those who are on the front line, Father. Praying for those who homes, Father, are at jeopardy in this fire, Lord, and we just pray, Father, for uh, Louisville, Kentucky, and this uh, U.S., Father, during this unrest that's going on even now, Father, and the officer that was shot, Father. We just pray that uh, your will be done here on earth as it has been on heaven, Father. And, Lord, we're just going to give your name the praise and the glory for all that you are doing because we realize even in a world of chaos, Lord, we could have that peace that passes all understanding because you said you would keep us in perfect peace if our mind is stayed on thee. So we just give you the praise and the glory for all that you do. In Christ's name we pray, amen and amen. God bless you. So okay, we're gonna get right into the study. As we said, we're talking about the Proverbs, which is the key to living, the key to living. And one of the things we said about Proverbs when we was going here, that those are really to say that it is short sayings that deal with our everyday life. And then there are those that uh, they said they're they're just wise saying that they're a little short saying that has spiritual truths, but I would like to say proverbs are things that we can live by. That uh, there are words that word of God that we're talking about is the wisdom of God that comes out of His word that we make application into our lives. 
and uh, each week I always like like we're going through you see this scripture this passage uh, not a passage but a quote by Warren Risby to me that just uh, has continued to just be a blessing to my heart where it says don't just make a living make a life uh, and I like that because you know, when they say it again and I, I wish I could put it on a uh, shirt but it's not my saying so I don't have that right say don't just make a living make a life and what we do is we spend so much time where it's on our jobs and going to the gym, eating the right food, taking the right medicine, trying to make a living. But if you don't have Christ, you don't have life. So what this study is, is telling us to, we really need to start making a life. And you do that by trying, applying the wisdom of God. So tonight, the, the subject is uh, coming out of chapter two. And it is uh, titled, The Path of Wisdom, wisdom and Life, uh, taken from Proverbs. And I, I love this screen here because it says, I choose. What do you choose? Do you choose life or do you choose wisdom? What do you choose? And, and this is the thing that God has given us. I said, we all have a free will to choose. But let me say it about your free will. Once you have come to Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you're not your own anyway. So you can't make your own decision. Now, now even though you may go out and do it, but rightfully, you have been bought with a price and you are not your own. So your will should be God's will. And hopefully you're choosing to follow Jesus Christ. So in this uh, second chapter, from chapter 2 to 4, Solomon is actually what he's doing here in the second chapter is giving a contrast between walking according to the course of this world's wisdom and the walking in the wisdom of God. You notice there's two types of wisdom, and I say it each week. There's wisdom of the world where it just comes naturally to do things and becomes a habit, or just you have a gift, you're just naturally good at something, and you say, oh, I have the wisdom of that. Are they just smart? That's just natural wisdom. Or there's a walking in the wisdom of God, which comes from God's word. But in these chapter, we will see that the wisdom of the world leads to destruction. And the wisdom of Solomon leads to uh, his sons to life that is now and forever. Let me say that. Wisdom of this world. And if you live in according to the wisdom of the world, just come with natural to you, it leads to a way of destruction. But when you choose the, the path of wisdom and life that comes through Jesus Christ and through the word of God, it leads to life now and forever. And it, it would be taught, uh, it's what Jesus taught his disciples in the Sermon on the Mount when he told them in Matthew 7, when he says to us, he was saying to his disciples and he said to us, enter in the narrow gate, for the gate is wide and the way is easy that leads to destruction. And those that enter in are by it are many, for the gate is narrow and the gate is narrow, and the way is hard that leads to life. And those who find it are few. Now, we, I know we've heard that it says that. So in other words, there's many gates. There's many ways that you hear people talking about you can live. But the end is a way of destruction. But I love this guy here. And the King James says, straight and narrow is the way. And and a few of those that find it. So that means that there's going to be a lot of people out there claiming to know God or following God. It has the wisdom of God. But their lives are going to end up in destruction but they're going to be few to find their way that leads to righteousness. So I would say this here, that also it, it benefits us to heed to the teaching of Solomon, even today, because there are many ways uh, that the gift is being taught on how to live. And most of us have heard the book, uh, the way here it is written by one popular author, one of the largest churches here in America, is that how to live your best life now. Now, I, you know, I really have a problem with that because uh, according to the world, my best life, is not now. My best life to come is when I'm with Jesus Christ. But what helps me live a fruitful life now is knowing what's before me. I have hope, uh, you know, of seeing Jesus Christ one day. So this is what Solomon is telling us that there are many ways of wisdom and many ways that people say are being taught is how you can get the wisdom of God. But we know that wisdom is not from God. So as we talk about this, so to walk through the second chapter, we will learn that the wisdom of God will protect you while you live here on earth. So if you're following God's word, not only will you have peace to pass on and standing, not only you have hope for a future, but you would also have uh, protection while you live here on the earth. And that's what this path of life is. Solomon is talking. Solomon is teaching his sons while they're young and, and teaching them if you follow the wisdom of God and the path of life that he has given, that you will have protection in this world we live. And so, in the passage of scripture where we're going to take this from now is the second chapter, verses 1 through 9. For those that happen to know, we're using the 
ESV, the English Standard Version. So if you could follow with me as we read these verses here, you would uh, understand this first section that we talked about. Proverbs 2, 1 and 9 says, My son, if you receive my words and treasure up my commandments with you, make your ear attentive to wisdom and incline your heart to understanding. Yes, if you call out for insight and raise your voice for understanding, if you seek if you if you seek it like silver and search for it as hidden treasure, then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. For the Lord gives wisdom from his mouth cometh knowledge and understanding. He stores up sound wisdom for the upright. He is a shield to those who walk in integrity, guarding the paths of justice and watching over the ways of his saints. And what is this talking about? It's talking about the path of life. And the key to verse to this here is the uh, Proverbs 2 and 9, where it says here, Then you will understand righteousness, justice, and equity, and every good path. So that is here. When you want to walk in the wisdom of God, then you will have what? You would understand righteousness and justice and equity in every good path. And this is basically what Solomon is summing up in this passage of scripture in his first nine verses. So it is here Solomon starts out by continuously addressing his sons in a loving way when he addresses them and in a very direct way, like a loving parent should. He tells, he tells his sons what's best for them, yet Solomon leaves it up the decision to follow the instructions that he taught them to his sons. In other words, he taught them, but he didn't make them do it. And I believe this is a lesson that, uh, one of the lessons I failed in teaching my sons. Uh, you know, I, I made them follow my instructions without giving a reason why. I told them what to do. And I know I'm not the only parent that did that because we use that same tactic. And a lot of times when we make our kids do something, we, say, we tell them this is what the word says, this is what you're going to do. Basically what it does, it leads to rebellion. And if we're honest with ourselves, most of our kids that were raised up in the church, if you look at the average church today, uh, and when I say that, that's just a traditional church, I know there are some churches that are flourishing, but the traditional church today, there are not many young people there. And one of the reasons why, I know they brought them up, we taught them in Sunday school, we taught them the word of God, we sent them to summer camps and, and to uh, Bible camps and things like that, and uh, um, youth training ministries and all those things here. But where are they at now? One of the reasons why, because we taught them and told them what to do, but didn't give them the option and explain to the wisdom to make that decision. So now they're basically, we see that the, the kids are in rebellion to the word of God. But in this chapter here that we're, this first chapter, one of the things that we find here is that um, what he says here, the, and the, the verse that I like is that it's where he says, guarding the paths of justice and watching over the way of the saints. Not only you know righteousness, not only will you know justice, but you will know the guarding of your paths of justice and watching over the same. When you are following the wisdom of God, you will have protection. God will protect you by his word. And there are three things that ways that in this chapter that actually Solomon addresses to his son is uh, the benefits of walking with God, uh, walking with the wicked, and walking with the righteous. And those are what I would kind of like to talk about so the very first one we want to talk about is walking with God. You know, always, always like that uh, the picture we used to all see there. Remember with the footprints and you would see the footprints in the sand. And you says, you know, you, you, it, was two, it was two footprints walking on it. Then when it got really hard and struggle, you only saw one. And it always illustrates and say, well, that was God carrying you. Well, I like that because I believe this is what is here. When you're walking in the wisdom of God, God is carrying you. He's protecting you. That's the reason why you would only see one footprint in the sand because it's his carrying you. So this is what Solomon is teaching his sons. When you walk in the wisdom of God, which we know is his word. So in each way uh, uh, to walk, Solomon gives an encouragement to walk in according to the God's word comes with protection. And let me say that here. When you want to uh, walk in, in the will of God and according to his word, it comes with protection. And Solomon here takes the God's law and makes it his own. Because he's teaching his sons 
by his faith and his obedience. In other words, he was not just teaching his son, but he was living that life before him. And he tells his sons to treasure it, uh, what he is teaching them in their hearts. He's telling them in their hearts and in, and the wisdom of God will give them protection and understanding why they live here on earth. And brothers and sisters here that are here, and this is a benefit of a teaching our kids. We may not see it now. After you long and gone, one of the things that you would be uh, good to know is that your kids are walking in the wisdom of God. You know they're going to be protected. You know they got, they understand the things of life, why they're here on earth. Amen. I mean, we said last week what the Bible was, basic instructions before leaving earth. Amen. So I believe that. One writer uh, says it here, and uh, he makes a point about wisdom, and it says here, it says, once wisdom is properly once wisdom is properly revalued, both the ear and the mind are captivated by it, which meaning that when you uh, wisdom you see how important it is to you, you now you want to hear it, you want to uh, understand it because you realize how important it is. So what he's saying here, wisdom of God is more valuable than gold and silver. And I believe if we knew that and we really put it to our life, we would seek for it. And we realize, knowing the wisdom of God, you're walking with God. God is protecting you. God, It comes with his protection. It comes with the blessings of the Lord. And so there are eight important things that Solomon tells his sons is their responsibility if they're going to walk with God in his wisdom. And they're in, in the first nine verses, he gives us eight things there. And, and if you and I are to walk successively and, and under God's protection in this life journey, we need to do these same things. So what I did is kind of just taking these and I, without going through verse by verse, is kind of just extrapolated from each one of these verse, these truths that I believe that we can benefit from. So if we're going to walk with God, uh, that's going to benefit it. So the very first thing we need to do is re they are to receive God's word. Solomon was telling his sons that they are to receive God's word or accept it. There's a lot of us receive it. We hear it, but we don't accept God's word. And he says here in Proverbs 2 and 1, he says, to, he said, My son, if you receive my words and treasure up my commandments with you. You see that what he says here? If you what? Receive my words and treasure up them. In other words, they have to, you're going to hear it, but you got to receive it. You know, and it's a time, it's like we've all, you know, people tell, ask person or something or telling them something. And it goes in one ear and out the other. Well, that's the way it is with a lot of believers. We can sit in the church Sunday after Sunday, hear the word of God, but we really don't receive it and we don't treasure it up. That's the reason why when we're going through something, we're asking, well, go can get the pastor to pray for me. We'll get somebody to help me out. When you know the word, you've been taught it, but what happened is you didn't treasure it in your heart. And, and then one of the things about this, how we've all heard throughout the uh, scriptures, it's been told. Every last one of us goes all the way back to Moses, God told Moses, Moses told the children of Israel, and remember what he said here in Deuteronomy 6 and 3. Here's what Moses, God told Moses, what he was to do, and then Moses was to transfer it to his children and to the children of Israel. And he says here, Hear therefore, O Israel, and be careful to do them, that it may go well with you, and that you may multiply greatly as the Lord. Hear what he's saying here? If you're going to receive it, that word hear, remember what he said, is another word, hearken or listen to the people and he said be careful to do them so in order for you to do them you got to hear it receive it and apply it to your life then he said that it may go well with you and that you may multiply greatly as the lord see the blessings come with that one when you receive the word of god you, you will treasure and and it goes on and says here also in that prayer, for the father for the god of our fathers has promised you in the land that's flowing with what? Milk and honey. If you receive God's word, obey it, and apply it to your life, he said here, you will be blessed. And God has promised you the land that's flowing with milk and honey. God has some plans for you and I, and he wants to bless us. We only apply his word to a lie. So the very first thing, and if you're going to walk with God in the wisdom of God, you need to receive God's word. Receive it. And remember, receiving it is not just hearing it, but it's treasuring it up. Solomon tells his son, the same Jesus tells his disciples, and he told the church, is that they were to what? To apply it to their daily lives, right? And the second thing, so not only do you supposed to, if we're going to walk with God in the wisdom of God, we need to receive his word. But secondly, 
They are to hide his uh, they are to hide our treasure, God's word, in their heart. That's why he said to them to treasure it. First, he said to receive it and treasure it in their heart. So it is with us. We are to treasure it. You know, we all have our favorite scripture. Uh, you know, mine is uh, the scripture. It goes, it, it takes it in Ephesians 6 and said, Finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. That's my favorite verse. Some people, it is... Uh, Psalms 23, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Well, we all have our favorite scripture, and we are treasured it in our hearts. Well, it needs to go beyond that. If you're going to have the wisdom of God, that means you need to receive it, treasure it in your heart, and then you're going to have to apply it. And look what it says here in Colossians, Colossians 3 and 16. It goes all the way to the New Testament. Same thought goes on and on. So you receive it, and you will treasure it. Here's how you treasure it. Let the word of Christ dwell in in you richly in other words it's just like being filled with the holy spirit that's what it, when you feel with the holy you feel with his god word you let the word of god dwell in you richly and how you do that by reading it studying it meditating on it then he says what teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom singing and songs and hymns and spiritual songs with thanksgiving in your heart to god so what is it saying here so how are we going we're going to first we're going to receive the word then after that, we're going to treasure the word in our hearts. We're going to let the word of God dwell in us richly. In other words, we're going to enjoy it. We're going to meditate on it, right? And which brings in, and then the third thing that we are, that they are to do is incline their ears to that. And this is all taken from those first nine verses that I read. And I, uh, you can go back and read them and you'll find where I'm saying this from. But he says the third thing is that they are to incline their ear. It's Solomon's way of saying not only are they to have an attitude of acceptance of God's word, be able to listen to what it says about their life. You, you know, that's what we got to do. You hear the word. When you know God is dealing with you, you know, uh, you hear a word. Sometimes you go to the church and you think the preacher is talking to you or somebody done told them what's going on in your life. It's not. The Holy Spirit is speaking to you. So you ought to incline your ear. Listen to it. Pay attention to it, to what God is saying to you. That's how you're going to walk in wisdom. That's how you're going to get the benefits of life. And, and, and I love that. Jesus said to, uh, in Matthew, Matthew uh, 13 and 9, he said, he who has an ear, what? Let him hear. If you hear it, in other words, you hear it, receive it, treasure it in your life. You know, um, I, this is something I, I cannot say enough about that so many people, uh, you know, you go to their house and you see it maybe sitting on the coffee table. There's this big Bible and uh, you know, there is it's full of dust because it's never opened up. Or you see, some people put it in. I see them put them in the in their uh, dashboard of the car or some special place. But it's just an ornament to them. But no, you need to uh, hear God's word, and not only you you hear it, but you need to receive it and treasure it in your heart. Open the book and study God's word. Amen. So you need to receive it. You you incline your ear to it. You ought to treasure it up. And the fourth thing that we come here, we ought to apply the word to their hearts. That's what Solomon said. Son, they're gonna, you're going to have to apply it to your heart. This is why he says treasure it up. The things that you hear, it will protect you. Hear the parents of your parents. Command it, he says here. So he says, when he says that he ought to apply it to their heart, it means we are to humbly obey it. And here's the thing. We hear it, and it, it goes in one ear, out the other. We don't obey God's word. Uh, you know, we all want to know, we want to be blessed, we want to know how to prosper, we want to know how to deal with evil, but we don't want God to tell us how to live our everyday life. That's the reason why I love that verse where it says, it is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my pathway. That's what the word will do. If you know that, when you read something, or you, and one of the things about applying the word to your life, when you, when you apply the word to your life and uh, you learn a passage of scripture, and you're going through something. If, say if it maybe it's trusting, you having an issue on a job, or you're in a home, and you got a problem trusting folks. But you realize that when you say, trust in the Lord with all thy heart, and lean not to thy own understanding, but in all thy ways acknowledge that he should direct your path. And you apply that to me. I'm not going to trust me anymore, but I'm going to trust God. You apply that, then when the situation comes, it automatically, because what? You know, it's not just head knowledge, but when you apply something to your heart, it becomes the way you are every day. And this is what he's saying here. Look at what Jesus said to, uh, to his disciples in John 17 and 17. He says here, if, anyone's, if everyone's will is to do God's will, 
He will know whether the teaching is from God or whether I am speaking of my own authority. Talking to his disciples, they were questioning him. He said, if anyone will do the will of, do, do God's will, he will know whether my teaching is from God or not. In other words, you try it and you apply it to your life. You know if I'm speaking of my own self of God. And this is very important, you know. That's why um, it, it behooves all of us to be like the Bereans. We hear preachers, even you hear Pastor White or my teaching on Wednesday nights or on Sunday morning. Study the scriptures. And it says, search the scriptures daily to see if those things are so. Just because I said it don't mean it's true. You need to study the word of God. And this is what I said, when you apply the word of God, and, and I, I was just sharing with uh, someone I was talking to today, and says that uh, my life is not the, what, just something I teach. This is what I live. And so what I'm teaching is because I've applied God's word to my life, I know it works because I've applied it. And this is what Jesus said. If anyone, one's will is to do God's will, he would know whether the teaching is from God or whether I'm speaking of my own. In other words, it's been tried and proven. So, and this is what he said. And the only way you're going to know God's wisdom works and has protection and brings comfort to you, you're going to have to apply his word to your life. Take it out of the pages and put it in your heart. And that's what he means by applying your word. So you're to receive it, right? You are to uh, incline to it. You are to apply it. And, and now we find here that the, uh, the fifth one, they are to cry out for knowledge of God's word. And this is one of those points here where, you know, I didn't want to really belabor it too much. But it, like James says here in James uh, 1 and 5, and he says, But if any man lack wisdom, let him what? Let him ask of God, who giveth all generously without reproach, and it will be given unto him. If you need wisdom for a situation on a job or to do something or to know if you're doing something right or wrong, ask God. You know, you, you, you don't, you don't, don't Google it. You know, we've got to the point now, ask Siri, uh, you know, uh, the question of what it is, ask God. It's amazing to me how we're quick to go to a computer when the word of God is right there. And the reason, the reason why we have to go there is because we have not hid his word in our hearts. And so, and this is what he said, we ought to cry out for knowledge of God's word. Ask God for it. You've got a situation on the job, somebody, or, or you've got a situation in your marriage, you've got a situation with your children you got a situation of a business deal you got to do and you don't know uh, which way you should do ask god what did he say and this is a promise he said who gives to all generously without reproach who will be given to him so if you ask god he because he wants us to live by wisdom and this is what comes with that so that's why i said you got to cry out for it and the, uh, the sixth thing that we need to do is that we are to Lift up our, our voices for understanding. Lift up our voices for understanding. And this is all coming from those nine verses too, what he says to them. They ought to cry out for the truth. That's what he says. He's telling his sons, that, that when you want wisdom, you got to work for it. You know, there's a, 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 a little story that says here that I, that I love about this here. It said, wisdom is the prize only available to people who are willing to work hard to find it. Many kids have the memory of a prize in a cereal box. I know it myself. The prize would always be at the bottom. Many a child would go digging around at the bottom of the box, uh, only for the mother to tell them to take their hands out the box because the child know that the prize was at the bottom, just to reach in and pull out the prize. But if you, in order for them to get that prize, the parent tell them they have to eat all of the cereal out of the box. The prize would only be available when the uh, job of eating it first. The prize at the bottom of the cereal box would be easily available. And so it is with the wisdom of God. you got to cry for it. You just don't accept something just because somebody said it. This is what he's saying. I mean, and, 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 and one of the things I, I wrote about this, I mean, don't just settle, and especially if you're sitting in a church and hope it's a Bible-believing church. If it's not a Bible-believing church, somebody just telling you stories, making you laugh, then uh, you're in the wrong place. you got to cry out for it. Don't settle for stories about the Word of God. But cry out for somebody to teach you the truth of and the truth of God's word and the truth of life that it teaches. In other words, you know, a story is good every now and then, but teach me the word of God. Don't settle for a story. But I realize that, you know, I heard a preacher says that uh, people uh, people want sermonettes for Christianettes. Well, don't be a Christian. Don't be one of those uh, 
want sermonette, tell him to give the word of God. Dig deep into it because you want the wisdom of God to live a fruitful life. And you got to cry out for it. You got to lift your voice for the saying and realize and say, hey, I, I want the word of God. Don't just tell me some stories. Teach me the word of God. And the, the seventh thing is, is to seek wisdom. And this is the same way. If you don't work for it, you don't get it. You know, and one of the things, and uh, life experiences teaches us the wisdom of God. When you're going through something, you you know, you're crying out to God, you're seeking, and you're seeking wisdom by, through God's word, trying to find out, Lord, what are you saying to me in this situation? Uh, why, why am I going through this? And you're asking God wisdom. So what you know, you're seeking him, you're crying out to him. And he said, those that seek me will what? Will find me. But the reason why a lot of us are making bad decisions, we're not seeking it in God's word. We're going off how we always look that thing so seeking wisdom is looking into god's word has to say about whatever given situation that you're in and this is what solomon is telling his son in those first nine verses there that they are to seek it he said you seek it you will find me you will find it and the eighth and the final thing he tells them in those nine verses they are to search for wisdom they are to search for it and you know i, I love this here's another one that said if a student is lazy to study, they should com they sh they shouldn't complain when they receive an F on their test. If a Christian is too lazy to find out what God's word says about a subject, he shouldn't be surprised when he lacks understanding and need to handle on the situation. What it is, you got to work for it. You got to search. And it says in, in the verse, I love it in Proverbs, I meaning uh, uh, Isaiah fifty five and six and seven, still talking about. Now, most of us want we want to walk with God, but only way you're going to walk with God, you got to walk in his word, walk in the wisdom of God. And look what Isaiah says here, way before Christ, he said, seek the Lord, what? Why he may be found. Call upon him, why he is near. Let the wicked, what? Forsake his ways. This is very important. That way, you got to seek the Lord. You got you to make effort. Wisdom just doesn't come. You just they can't sit in church and say, I heard the preacher, that was a good message, and go home. And then all of a sudden, a life situation, because you didn't seek it, and, and you, you, you didn't uh, search for the scriptures to find out what it really meant. You don't, you're not, it's not going to be there. So this is what he's saying here. you got to seek for wisdom, and you got to search for it. Study the scriptures. Amen. That's what Bible study is important. And I, I praise God for this time here on Wednesday night where I get a chance to walk through scriptures with you. Uh, because Proverbs, I'm not doing it as probably an expository uh, sense of working verse by verse, but just trying to pull out some truths out of uh, these because there's 30, 31 chapters in Proverbs and uh, we'll be here uh, for a long time. And I, I don't want to bore any of you. But uh, but I love it what he says here. Not only and and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord that he may have compassion on him, and the and our God, for he will pardon him abundantly. Let me read that again. This is what he said. If you're going to search for it, look what he said. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his ways. In other words, when you're seeking the Lord, you got to turn from sin. You can't live in sin. And the unrighteous man, his thoughts. So not only your deeds, but if you have unplanned thought, get in God's word. He said, let him return to the Lord. You want the wisdom of God? Seek him. Turn from your wicked ways. Then he said, that he may have compassion on him. You're seeking God? Go ahead. Those that diligently seek him, he says, will find him. He's a reward of them that diligently seek him. And, the, and our God, for he will abundantly pardon. You know, I can't think of a greater thing to thank God for. So to summarize all these here, these uh, first eight things here, if you want wisdom, you have to work for it. And this is what I'm saying here. You got to work for it. I mean, I thank God that you're listening to me, but you ought to have a time when you are meditating on God's word. You're having your devotion time. You're praying and spending time with the Lord. It doesn't just come just because you uh, just sit there and listen to me. You got to study. So there are three things that you need to do. You need to study God's word. You need to med be meditating on God's word. And you need to apply the truths of scripture to your all of life situation. Because you're going through it. Somebody else in the Bible has been through it. And once you have experienced the wisdom of God and the power of God, you won't forget it. The reason why I have certain truths in my life and certain things in my life that uh, that help me and I, I have gotten victory over sinful habits and thoughts in there 
is because of what? I apply the scripture to it. I memorize that scripture. So when I'm tempted to fall into certain sin, the Holy Spirit brings it back to my remembrance. Why? Because I studied it and I meditated on the wisdom of God, which is his word. And so if you're struggling, whatever area you're struggling with, take the word of God, search the scripture. And one of the things is if you got a good concordance, a Bible that have a concordance, one of the things that you can do, if you have, say if you have a problem, I'm just going to use it for lust. Say if you got a problem with lust, look up the word lust. And in your concordance and follow those scriptures that are in there and look at all those passages of scripture that talks about lust. And then there's one that administer you for that situation, meditate on it, study it, and see what God said. And I guarantee you the next time you have a lustful thought or a passion, desire to do something that's not pleasing to the Lord, the Holy Spirit can bring it back to your remembrance. Why? Because what did you do? You searched it, you seeked it, you received, you applied the, uh, the wisdom of God to your life. And it you now it's, it becomes a joy to experience the things of God. So when hard times come, you're not afraid of it. Why? Because you learn how that God will protect you. And one of the things I like that, and I said this here, because God's protection is real. And the only way you're going to know his will is real is by putting God's word to the test. God said it. We've said it. God said it. That settled it, right? I believe in that settled. So even if you don't believe it, God's word is still settled. Now, and one of the ways God's uh, protection is real, and it comes in his next verse here where it says here in Proverbs 2, 7 and 8, and it says here, look what it says here. He is a shield to those who walk in integrity, guarding the paths of justice and watching over the way of his saint. This is here. When you're walking in wisdom, he said he is a shield. You know what a shield does? A shield protect, protects you. When you're trying to live a righteous life, living a life of holiness and pleasing to God, or walking into wisdom of God, his word become the wisdom of God becomes a shield to you. It protects you when you walk in integrity. And not only protecting, but guarding you in the paths of justice. People are trying to misuse you, but God will take care of that. And why it says here, and I love this word here, he's watching over the ways of the saint. So you know what? When you wake up in the morning, you're going through the day, God is watching over you. And it tells us that he, he says he's sitting at the right hand of the Father making intercession for Praying for you is the same thing as watching over you. That's what God is doing for us. And David is a good example of that. When he, when he says here in one Psalms 119 and 11, he said, I have stored up your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. Amen. And how many of us said that we've heard it? But how are we going to do that if you want God's protection? You're going to have to store up God's word in your heart. So that you have something to hold on to. You know the wisdom of God. And if you, let me say this to us. Because some of us, you know, we can be dedicated to a hard and hard working on our job. Just to get a paycheck that's only going to last for a moment. Because you'll make the money time you pay your bill, get some food and things like that. That money is gone. You should be just as dedicated to applying God's word. Which is far more valuable. In order to get spiritual wisdom that will help you not only for now. But through all eternity. That's what the word of God. Look what it says here. Another one of David's verses. It says here in Psalms 119, 89 and 90. He said, forever, O Lord, your word is what? Firmly fixed in the heavens. It can't change. You know, that paycheck can wear out. All of a sudden, the economy can go. The Federal Reserve can shut down money. We like to see that there. Well, you couldn't go out there. And it says firmly fixed. He says faithfulness endured for all generations. You have established the earth and it is steadfast. So in other words, you need to uh, store up and, and meditate and start walking in the wisdom of God. Because it's fixed in heaven. His word changes not. And it protects you. And now the question is, what would it protect you from? It comes in the next section here, which I'm going to walk through. It may be pretty fast. Is is walking with the wicked man. Remember I said the first part, first nine verses, is walking with God. Now Solomon tells his sons about walking with wicked men. And I'm going to tell you, wicked men in this world are something. So in the verse of this section here, he will show that how walking with the wisdom of God will, and according to God's word, will protect you from wickedness of men and women. Now I say that. I didn't just want to point it in, but... Walking in the wisdom of God will protect you from wicked men and wicked women. And I'm going to tell you, this world is full of them. And it should be said that there are two types of people that are uh, by this by nature. That's women and men. They're, they're wicked by what? By nature. They were born into sin and shaped in iniquity. And even 
people without Christ. And look what he says about our heart here in Jeremiah 7 and 9, 17 and 19. So he says the person without Christ, heart is what? Deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? God knows it. That's why he tells us that uh, if we're going to walk in the wisdom of God, it would protect us from wicked men because people's heart are deceitful deceitful and they're and they're desperately wicked and you see what's going on what's going on in society now is the wickedness of man this is the condition of the every heart of person without god david at the man at the guy's own heart cried out because his natural heart condition he had sinned with bathsheba and he found him he became a, a murderer by having her husband because he wanted to have sex with her so bad had her husband killed got her pregnant and tried to hide it this is a man at his own heart right but his heart still, without God, is desperately wicked. And here's his response here. Look what he said. This is David said here in Psalm 51 and 10. He says here, Create in me, O God, a what? A clean heart and renew a right spirit within me. David, a man after God's own heart, a man who had a, a, a illicit relationship with a woman and, and had her husband killed and, and hid it for over a year and living in there. Sin never left his house and his family was in turmoil all because of that. Why? His heart was desperately wicked. But if you're walking in the wisdom of God, it would keep you from wicked people and wicked men and wicked men, women. And how do you know that? Look what he says here to his sons here in Proverbs the second chapter. Now we're walking down through verses 10 through 19. And here's Solomon now telling his sons how wisdom will protect them from wicked men. He says, the wisdom will come into your heart and knowledge will be pleasant to your soul. Description will watch over you and understanding will guard you, delivering you from the way of evil, from the men of perverse speech who forsake the paths of uprightness to walk in the ways of the darkness, who rejoice in doing evil and delights in the perverseness of evil, men whose paths are crooked and who de uh, are devilish in their ways. Wow. Solomon's letting his sons know that wisdom of God and the knowledge of God will give you peace in the midst of all that is going on. But he talked about in 9 and 10. Remember what he says here? He goes back. Remember what he says in 11 and 12? He says here, for the wisdom will come from your heart and knowledge will be pleasant to your soul. It will give you discretion to watch of you, watch over you, understand and guard you. That's when you're walking in wisdom. It will keep you from that. Why? Because of these other, the wicked people, perverted speech. They love doing darkness. They rejoice in doing evil. Their perverseness of evil. Men who pass are crooked and devilish in their way. I can't think more than as, as followers of Christ, we need peace from within. Because there's nothing in this world that can bring calm to our soul that's going on around us. All these are things that are going on. And, 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 and look, just, just for right now, this is why we need the wisdom of God. And this pandemic that is going on, just not here in America, but over the world, wildfires going on, not just in Amer in California, but in Oregon, in other states, in Nevada. Then, then there's racial injustice, political chaos going on, earthquakes and hurricanes, economic crisis, and the list can go on and on what's going on in the world around us. So what do we need to keep us from this evil? We need the wisdom of God. And before I jump too far into this here, I wanted to read what our Lord had to say about such conditions. Because as I read this and I hear people saying, what's going on? And what's going on in the world? Is the end coming up? But look what Jesus said to his disciples uh, here. Um, and he said, and I'll read it for you. Uh, it may have got on there. But Matthew 24, verses 6 to 9, he says, And you will hear of wars and rumors of war. He said, And see that you are not alarmed. This must take place. But the end is not yet. For the nation will rise up against nation, kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines. That's what we have going on, earthquakes in various places. Here's the verse that I love. All these must, all these are but a beginning of birth pains. Meaning, it's not the end. It is not the end. So Solomon later says that God calls these people wicked men. People that do these things, they are wicked men. Proverbs um Tells in Proverbs uh, 8 and 13, For the fear of the Lord is hatred of evil, pride and arrogance, and the way of evil is a perverted speech I hate. One commentary says it this way, He who walks in dark paths of disobedience and enjoys doing that which is evil. There are people who enjoy it. 
They love doing things that are not pleasing to God. But when you are walking in the wisdom of God's word, you will have discernment and will avoid such people. So that says that when you walk in the wisdom of God, you'll see what people are all about and you'll know how to avoid them. And that's it. Many of your people, I used to be in the prison ministry uh, for uh, 19 years as a Protestant chaplain there at Terminal Island Correctional Institute. And there were many guys that I would talk to or get a chance to witness to and pray with that said that it was at the wrong place at the wrong time. Why? They chose it. They were not walking in the wisdom. They were following people and ended up caught up in a situation doing 25 to life just because at the wrong place at the wrong time or with the wrong people. But when you have the wisdom of God, it'll help you stay away from evil people and people with perverseness. Amen. And one of the things it talks about those, and it says here, also walking in the path of wisdom protect you from, and here's the one that I didn't want to leave out because I'm saying men that were there, but also walking with wicked women. So not only walking in the wisdom of God will keep you from wicked men, but it also keep you from wicked women. I know I may lose some out there and then say, I'm calling you wicked. But look what the scripture said. He tells it, Proverbs, Paul, uh, Solomon teaching his son. He said, so you will be delivered from the forbidden woman, from the adulteress with her smooth words who forsake the companion of her youth and forget the covenant of her God. For her house sinks down to death and her path to the departed. None who who go to her come back, nor do they regain path. Let me read that again because I think I didn't read it. I want you to hear. This is what Solomon is teaching his son about these women. He said, you walk in the wisdom of God. It will protect you from not from wicked men, but so that you will be delivered from forbidden women, from the adulteress with her smooth words, who forsake the companion of her youth and forgets the covenant of her God. For her house sinks down to death, her path to the departed. None who go to come go to her come back, nor do they gain regain the path of life. I like this, you know, the here the ESV calls it a forbidden woman, but I like the King James because it said they calls her a strange woman. But we know her as an adulteress, she's a wayward wife, a prostitute, or just loose women. That's what he said. When you walk in the wisdom of God, it will keep you from the strange woman. She's an adulteress. She's a wayward woman. She could be a prostitute or just women who like loose living. But here's the thing. These wicked uh, wickedness of men, uh, it says here, the wickedness of men are seen in their perverseness of their speech. He says how they speak. But strange women and wicked women are known by their flattering words. She knows how. In other words, her communication skill is not her speech. It's not what she says, but it's her manipulation that she does with her body and, and telling you what you want to hear so you can enjoy what you want to hear. She knows how to soothe and, and seduce you just to control and to destroy you as a man or a woman. That's what it is. So not only this can apply to uh, you walk in the wisdom and keep you from seductive women, but it keep you from seductive men. Women, when you walk in the wisdom of God, you have discernment if this man is right for you or not. Our brother to keep you from, you know, yes, he's telling you how good you look, but you, it will keep you in the right path. It said, Exodus tells us in Exodus, uh, it tells us uh, in the book of Exodus, it said we're not to commit adultery. So Solomon returns to what uh, he has instructed his sons in chapter 1, that, that they are to avoid temptations to sin. And here's another thing that the wisdom of God is needed for. It keeps you from temptation. It will protect you from the seductive alluring of women. Amen. You want the wisdom of God? The word of God will teach you how. I mean, and he says here, she was not faithful. It goes back to what she says here. She was it. From an adulteress, or a smooth word, who forsaked her companion, which means from her youth, her husband. She was not faithful to her husband, and she ain't going to be faithful to you. And she commits, it says, the covenant to God because of the covenant of marriage. That's what he says to her. So we are to do. She was, she was not faithful to her God or her husband. She used her body in a way of pleasing, not pleasing her, not pleasing the Lord. And those, and it says here, what I like about it in these verses here, those who fall to her seductive notions and her advances will end up in spiritual death. You see what it says here? And the Talmud, which is the, Ar uh, the Aramaic uh, uh, Hebrew Bible reads, it said, they shall not return in peace. In other words, those who enjoy the pleasure of sex 
and with these strange women will never have peace within themselves. It's like that. It won't hear. It's quite white. It says, it's, it goes on and said, it's amazing how Solomon taught his son about the very thing that caused him uh, to mess up. He didn't follow his own teaching. It was his own sexual appetite for women that ruined his old, in old age. He turned and turned his hearts away from God to these strange women and to worship their gods. Solomon had 300 wives and 700 concubines. He had enough women to go around all year round, but yet it calls him defilement. So he's telling his son, don't fall there. And when you go down in there, it says your, her house sinks to death and her path is to the departed. And other people don't come back. And that same allurement happens to, uh, to women and men today who, who all they can care about is satisfying their flesh. And I, I can't leave this point without reading what the Apostle Paul said and he warned the church of Corinth about these seductive women and their sexual sins. And he says here, as I uh, try to get ready to close, in 1 Corinthians, here in 1 Corinthians 6 and 9, and this is very important. I want you to listen to this. Because he said, the wisdom of God will protect you from this here. So here's the wisdom of God. Hopefully, it says here, look, it says here. Or, do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither sexual immoral, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor men who practice homosexuality, nor thieves, nor the greedy, the drunkard, the reviled, which means partiers, nor swindlers, will inherit the kingdom of God. What is he saying here? When you walk in the wisdom of God, it'll keep you from that. It will give you peace. That's why uh, we're reminded in the New Testament, the Apostle Paul said, Do you not know that the unrighteous mean what? The wicked people? will not inherit the kingdom of God, neither do those, don't be deceived, neither those who are sexually immoral, people who are having sex outside of marriage and all of them fornication and, and things like that, idolaters and adulterers. And I said fornication because you can be an adulterer. I mean, you're an adulterer with somebody else's spouse, but a fornication is all sexual sins, perverseness. Then he goes on and said, nor men who practice homosexuality are any of those nor thieves or greeters or drunkards or followers will inherit the kingdom of God. But when you walk in the wisdom of God, it will protect you from this. Man, oh man, I, I can't say this enough. But here's the close, and I love how he closes with that, is how? Walking with the righteous. First, walking with God. How? Walking with God is walking in the wisdom of God. Walking according to his word, receiving his word, applying his word, treasuring up his word, seeking his word, uh, uh, diligently searching for his word. And when you do that, it will protect you from what? From the wicked men who perverse. And we live in a time when perverseness, they come out of the mouth, lie. All they do is lie, lie, lie. You know, you hear it all the time. You hear it on the TV. You hear it from the White House all the way to the, uh, the schoolhouse. People are lies. But he says here, but when you walk in the wisdom of God, the benefit is now walking with the righteous. And here he says here, walking with the righteous. Look what he says here in Proverbs. I get ready to close. He says, so you will walk in the way of good and will keep the paths of the righteous. For the upright will inherit the land. And those with integrity remain in it. But the wicked will be cut off from the land and will be treacherous and will be rooted out. Wow. Wow. Remember what he says here? There's eight things that we need to start. If you're going to walk in wisdom, he said here, remember he said, if you're going to walk in wisdom, if you receive my word, he says, if you incline your heart to understanding, if you accept God's word, if you apply God's word to your heart, if you cry out for knowledge of his word, if you lift up your voice for understanding, if you seek wisdom, if you seek and search for wisdom, then you'll be like what Psalms here. And I love this verse here. And we all ought to write this one down in Psalms 1. Here's what it is. Here's the benefit of walking in the wisdom of God. He will be like a tree planted by the streams of water that yields its fruit in its season, and its leaf does not wither. In all that he does, he prospers. When you're walking in the wisdom of God, not saying you're not going to struggle, not saying you're not going to have hard time, but it says that it, you'll be like the streams of water. You ever notice plants that are not by the water, they die off? But you see those trees who are planted by the river? Man, they're strong. The roots are strong. Why? Because they get a continuous flow of water, uh, uh, getting nourishment. And it says it, it will give fruit in their season. When it's time for them to bloom, they're going to bloom. And their leaves do not wither. They don't ever die. 
And it says here, and all that he does will prosper. When you're walking in the wisdom of God, you will prosper. And brothers and sisters, we live in a time, I don't know, I want to prosper. Not just materially, but spiritually. I want to inherit the kingdom of God be through Jesus Christ. And here's the consequence. If you don't, and I had to underline that here. If you don't walk in the wisdom of God, here's what the results will be. And it says, the wicked will be cut off from the land. And I put that in red on the screen there because I wanted you to realize it represents hell to me. If you do not turn from your wicked ways, and if you don't heed to the wisdom of God and his word, he said the wicked will be cut off from the land and the treacherous will be rooted out. In other words, God will deal with them. So how to do it? When you decide to obey God, you will have the privilege of walking with the righteous and you have the blessings of God. You will never lack anything. And especially you will know the right kind of friends. So, and that's what we need to realize that. So if you're not walking in the wisdom of God, you're going to suffer the consequences. But the benefits is, is that you're walking in the wisdom of God. You have God's protection and his comfort. And this is what Solomon is teaching his sons. And, and next week we'll get into about applying it and how it really helps us have that knowledge of God and how it helps us grow in him. So I pray that this was a blessing to you. Uh, I know I went through it kind of fast there and I, Hope that if you have any questions about anything I said, remember, you can leave a comment or a quote here. Uh, we want to pray for you. If you have prayer requests, let, let us know, and we'll be careful. So, because we're praying for you. So let's close with a word of prayer. Eternal God, our Father, Lord, we thank you tonight, Father, for your word. And it is a lamp unto our feet and a lamp unto our pathway, Father. And it is in you, Father, that we know we live, we move, and have our being. Without you, we can do nothing, Father. But with you, Father, we know all things are possible. So, Father, we ask in tonight, O oh God, that uh, those who are listening to this word, Father, that one who is struggling in the things that we talked about with wicked men, or maybe they are been wicked. They say they know you, Father, but they've been living in wickedness, Father, in lying and perverseness and sexual immorality. And, Lord, they're having a problem getting away from the strange woman or the strange man living in immoral situations. Father, you said that we confess our sins, that you would be faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all righteousness. So, Father, we ask you, O oh God, you said what you have bound in heaven has been bound on earth. What you loose on earth has been loose in heaven. You have loosed the power to forgive, and the forgiveness comes through the blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. That psalm said, what shall wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What shall make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. We thank you for your blood, Father. And we plead that tonight on those who are hearing, that they won't just be hearers of your word, but doers. That, Lord, they'll make it a point to apply the wisdom of God to their life that they would grow with you. Continue to bless us, Lord, as we grow in grace and in knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Once again, I'm going to say it to you tonight, and I always like to want to give that. Uh, if you don't know Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior, all you need to do is confess your sin and let, let the Lord know that, Lord, hey, I'm doing some things where I'm living outside of your will, Lord, and I've been trying to do it and I can't. Just confess it. Then have a heart. You want to repent. You want to change. That word repent just means that you make a, a 180 degree turn. You were going north, you go south. You was going up, you start going down. It's just all. Oh, you make a 100 degree change. Repent of your sin. Say, Lord, I believe in my heart that God has raised you from the dead. And because of that, I want to receive you into my heart to be my Lord and for Savior. You can do If you want to do that, you deny it. You can accept Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior. And if you have done that and you don't understand it, you can always uh, contact us at Good News Church and, um, and let us know. And you can always email me at... Um, Good News Church, Pasadena at gmail.com and let me know that you say, hey, I want to know more about what it is to be saved or I want to know more about uh, Good News Church and what you teach in our doctrine. Feel free to uh, do that. But until then, we want you uh, to continue to spread the good news. Remember, during this pandemic time, this is a great time to be evangelistic for those who know Christ or you want to share with a, a loved one or someone who's out of the ark of safety. Share us on Facebook, like us on Facebook, and subscribe to us on YouTube. It will benefit you and it will benefit those who hear. So God bless you and God keep you is our prayer. And so until until we come together again, remember that our worship services on Sunday morning, you can see us on Facebook at 8.30 to about 9.45. And if uh, once the church door is open, the good news is located at 239 West Washington Boulevard in Pasadena, California. Our, our, our zip code is 91103. And um, I'm the pastor there. For those who don't know, my name is Pastor Terry Whitehurst. And remember, at Good News, every
everybody is somebody in the eyes of God. God bless you and God keep you as our prayer until we come together again. Have a blessed evening.